Hey guys, if you're ready to step up your technician game, follow these three steps and I guarantee you'll be making more money because you'll be spending less time diagnosing a vehicle, you'll be selling more quality repairs, and you'll be increasing your customer retention, keeping you and your shop busy year round. My name's Thomas. Let's go. My first trick is KISS, K-I-S-S. -S. Stands for keep it simple, stupid. This one's been around for a long time, but it's probably the most important thing that you can remember when diagnosing a vehicle. I'd say 99 times out of 100, it's the simple fix. There are some really in-depth uh, repairs and uh, things that you need to do for diagnosis, uh, but most of the time, it's the simple fix uh, that will that will repair the car. So if you can keep it simple, check the fuses, uh, check all the basics first, uh, you will save yourself a lot of time uh, diagnosing the vehicle. My second tip is to make a system. What I mean by that is have a process that you're going to do on every single car from the time you get the key to the time that you uh, are parking in the parking lot uh, ready for pickup that you're going to do uh, on those cars so that way you know where you are in that process. For instance, if I go out and get a car, I'm going to take it on a quick road test, look at the lights on the dash, listen for any noises or anything uh, that could tell me if I have a wheel bearing going bad. Uh, any struts, any uh, sway bar links, um, anything uh, like that that the customer didn't even uh, complain about, they may not know about it. Uh, a lot of times wheel bearings and tires uh, get bad so gradually, uh, customers really never know that they're bad until, you know, us as techs hop in the car and uh, we hear it right away since it's so loud uh, and that's a legit repair. Uh, you know, they're going to need those parts, uh, whether it be tires, uh, whether it be uh, wheel bearings. Um, got a little sidetracked on that, but go for a road test. I bring it back in, do a light check. Uh, at that point, I'll look at the tires, look at the brakes, uh, see what the condition of those are, uh, both tread depths and age. Are they dry, rotten, and cracked? Uh, then I'll lift the car up. Give the wheels a shake down, see if any tie rods, bushings, uh, wheel bearings uh, are bad. Uh, lift the hood, look the belts, look the fluid levels. If anything's low, could be a leak. Could be, you know, never know. Time to time to check that out. Same thing goes with tires. Uh, a lot of times I'll do tire pressures first. Um, if they're all low, okay, probably just changing temperatures, changing air. Uh, air temperatures um, but if one is low all by itself eh, you probably got a nail probably got a nail or the the wheel could be leaking or or something that you need to look into on that one wheel uh, so that's what I'll do um, when I bring it in uh, when I'm taking the car out doing a final checkout uh, what I'll do is I'll verify my repairs, any repairs that I may have done, including an oil change. Did I reset the service light? Did I put a, uh, the oil change sticker in the windshield, if you use those? Um, did I top up all the fluids? You know, is every repair done? Um, do that, checking and setting your tire pressures, make sure no lights are on the dash that customer didn't want to get fixed. Uh, all lights are off that should be off. Uh, and I also try and go through and the repairs that I have done, try and think through every step of the way. If you can think through and let's say you're doing brakes, you took it off and you definitely remember tightening up the uh, caliper anchors, tightening up the caliper bolts, the slide pin bolts, uh, you lubed everything. Uh, if you can remember all those steps, chances are that you're not going to have any loose parts or anything fall off and uh, be a danger to the customer. Your repair is then a quality repair. You feel good about it and then 
you can go ahead and park it and, and ship it. But every single car, if you do the same exact thing, you'll know what's been done and what hasn't, what the car needs, and, and you'll feel good about it, as well as upselling things to the customer that they need. Um, I never sell anything to a customer that's not needed. I think that's just a complete scam. Um, I think that's just bad business to do. Um, and that's even reflecting on the, on the tech. Should not be trying to sell things that aren't needed. But if you know manufacturers saying that you need to do things by time and mileage, that's a legit repair. Uh, wheel bearings that are loud, you know, they may not have complained about it, but that's a legit repair to get done. Um, so that's that's what I do on my checkouts. That's my system. My third tip is take pride in your repairs. I touched on it a little bit, but never sh sell anything that's not needed. Um, always be, if, if you wrote it up on the estimate and, and tried to sell it, if it went to another shop, they should be able to verify that yes, that part needs to get replaced. Um, don't be afraid to use a torque wrench. Uh, you know, a lot of oil filters now, 25 Newton meters. Um, and if you over tighten them, they're really a pain to, to get back off. Um, don't be afraid to use that torque wrench. If you got it, use it. Uh, that's what they're there for. Um, but yeah, take, take pride in, in your job. Take pride in doing work uh, on the customer's car. And when you do that, the customers, the customers feel it. Um, in my experience, uh, taking pride in my work, I've had customers that would only ask for me. Um, they would wait for me, um, even though, you know, the shop may be able to get them in immediately. They'll wait around uh, until I can work on it. Uh, and that's a good feeling to have. Um, and then you know that they're also coming back to your shop. So that's not only keeping your shop busy, uh, it's keeping you busy. Um, and that's just gonna make you money in the long run. Um, I'd also even go so far as to add this as a, maybe even a fourth bonus tip, but don't be afraid to talk to the customers. Um, if they wanna talk to you, usually you can uh, create a bond uh, between you and that customer, you and that person. Um, and they'll come back to you and they'll trust you on any repairs that you say that you need. Um, once you gain that trust, uh, they will treat you right and you will make money and you will, you will succeed in this business because your, your higher ups, your managers, your foremen, uh, they're going to see that and you're going to start advancing in your career much faster. Uh, I would also say that um, if the service manager, ser service director is looking at uh, your CSI, following these things, that's going to increase that, the CSI. Uh, I've just found doing the, the checkouts like this, taking uh, pride in your repairs uh, and, and doing those things, um, it really makes for a quality repair. Customers come back, they're happy. Uh, and they'll give you those high marks. Uh, if you don't have CSI, they're still giving a review somewhere, whether it's Google, whether it's you know Yelp or, or whatever it is, they're talking to their friends. Um, just because you don't get a bad mark on, uh, you're getting a bad mark somewhere online or on some manufacturer's website, doesn't mean it's not affecting you. So everything that uh, we do as a tech, uh, it, it matters. So that's all I got for you. Um, try and put these things into practice. Uh, it costs nothing. Um, my, te my system that I do as far as, uh, uh, my test drives and, and my checkouts literally takes five to 10 minutes. Uh, I drive about a mile, uh, bring it back in. It doesn't take long at all. Uh, and you can sell a lot of work. You can make sure it's a quality vehicle uh, where if the customer is ready to hop in it and do a eight hour drive, you can feel confident either in that car is good to go 
or they should not take that car and again having the the knowledge of what their car is and the knowledge that their technicians taking care of their car like that so they can have that uh, they have that option maybe they need to get a rental car uh, that's gonna get you that's gonna build that customer retention um, which is gonna help you out in the long run if this video has helped you uh, please like and subscribe uh, I'm new to the channel um, this is probably my my third video it's my longest video so far uh, please put in the comments uh, what can I do better uh, what did you like um, you know want to make this channel succeed uh, this won't be the last time you see me uh, so really let me know let me know what you think thanks guys have a good one